Figma has recently rolled out not one, not two, but four updates to its variables feature. And in this video, I'll show you what they are and how you can incorporate them into your projects. The first update is all about color scoping. Well, imagine you create a few color variables for a project, like what I have here. If I just head over to local variables, you can see that under this tokens collection, I have created these color variables. I have two color variables for my background color and also these three color variables for my text. And if I go ahead and select any element, for example, this text, and I try to change its color, you will see that here I'll get all these color variables, both for my text and also for my background color. That's not good, especially when you have many, many different color variables. Well, now with the help of color scoping, we can fix this issue. So if I just head over to local variables, here I can select this color, right click on it, and hit edit variable. And now as you can see, we have this color scoping section. And by default, all these checkboxes are checked. So I'm just gonna click on this one to uncheck all these checkboxes. And instead, just check this frame and this shape because I'm not gonna use this surface primary color for my text layers, okay? The stroke could also be checked, that's fine. If you have some specific variables for your borders, you can just uncheck it as well. But I'm gonna leave it as is. And now I'm gonna repeat the same thing for these other variables. But you know what? Let me show you the second update as well. Because now you can easily select multiple variables. So I'm gonna select these two color variables. I'm gonna hold down the shift key on my keyboard to select them both, right click and just hit edit variables and I'm just gonna uncheck them all except these two. You can leave the stroke checked as well. Next, I'm gonna select these three because these are reserved for my text layers. So I'm just gonna right click here, edit variables. Let's uncheck all these and just check the text checkbox, okay? Now, if I go ahead and select one of these text layers and I try to modify its color, as you can see, I only get these three color variables that are reserved for my text layer. The same thing applies to this text layer. Let me show it to you. There we go. And now if I select this button and I try to change its color, as you can see, I only get these two color variables, the surface primary and the button background primary. I already talked about the second update. Now let's move on to the third update. Here, if I just right click on this color variable, as you can see, we have this new section, code syntax. If I just hit this plus button, I can define a variable name for different platforms. For example, for web, I can just call it surface primary, okay? And for iOS, I can just edit it like this, surface, primary with a capital P. It depends on your needs, but now if I head over to dev mode and I try to preview this card for different platforms, here as you can see, I have CSS, it's for web. As you can see, I'll get surface primary. And if I just change it to iOS, Swift UI, I'll get this name that we just defined, Surface Primary with a capital P. And the last update, which is very cool, is all about modifying modes of nested elements. So imagine you've created different modes for your collections. Here, if I go to my text collection, as you can see, I have two modes, English and German. And in the past, when we wanted to switch between these two modes, we needed to select the parent frame and just here modify the mode. I'm gonna change it to German, just like this. But now imagine you have different cards here. Let's just duplicate it. I'm gonna hit Control D or Command D, move it to the right side. Now imagine you wanna keep this mode intact, okay? The parent mode intact, but you wanna adjust the mode of this particular card. Well, now it's possible to do that. I can just select this card and here, let's say you wanna change its mode to dark, okay? I can just change it easily to dark without affecting the other card. Or let's say you just wanna modify the language here. So I can just select this card and just change its text mode, the language mode to German, just like this. 
it's very handy, especially when you want to place multiple elements with different languages on a page. If you want to learn how to make your design responsive using Figma variables, make sure to check out this video on the screen. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you found it helpful, please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel for more design tutorials. Have a beautiful day and see you next time.